Friends, whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, wherever you are on your faith journey, you are welcome here and you are welcome to listen as we light the two candles this morning for our Advent wreath today, we add the candle of peace. Today we light the candle of peace along with the candle of hope. Lighting the second candle reminds us of the complexity of what it means to feel peace this year. With a year full of uncertainty, anxiety, and fear, the peace candle invites us into a safe and secure space where we can just be. And as we light the candle of peace, we acknowledge the times this year when peace has felt too far away. We acknowledge the times when our peace has felt insecure. We acknowledge our shared desire for your safe presence of peace, O oh God, as we continue in our Advent journey. Will you please join me in our prayer? Holy God, we thank you for the gift of peace that is found in Christ Jesus. Remind us of the safety and security of your peace as we enter into another week. Amen. Hope is a light. Hope is a light. Hope is a light to show the way. Hope is a light to show the way. Light the Friends, will you join me in our call to worship? Welcome today to this place of preparation. Although we have we come seeking to prepare our hearts to receive God's good news. Get ready. The Lord is bringing to us hope and peace. How wonderful it is that the Lord is showing us Open our hearts and let your spirits be quiet. Be at peace with the Lord. Lord, prepare our lives and bring us peace. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is number 114, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Let us pray together our Advent prayer of confession. Forgiving God, in this season of Advent, we welcome the coming of your light in a world filled with darkness. We confess to you the ways in which we have added to that darkness rather than obeyed our call to live as children of the light. We ask your forgiveness for times when we worship violence and belittle peace, for times when we fight amongst ourselves, for times when we forget that we are all children of God, for times when we do not stand up for the helpless among us. By your tender mercy, may the dawn of high break upon us and give light to those of us that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the ways of peace. Hear us as we pray. Our two scripture readings are from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 4, and Luke chapter 1, verses 68 through 79. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. And now from Luke. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has looked favorably on his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a mighty savior for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, that we would be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us. Thus he has shown the mercy promised to our ancestors and has remembered his holy covenant, the oath that he swore to our ancestor Abraham to grant us that we, being rescued from the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, child, will be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation to his people by the forgiveness of their sins. By the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. Here ends the readings for the second Sunday in Advent. I have very fond memories of the Advent season growing up. Now, for all the Sundays in Advent, we would get together as a family in the afternoon, like good Germans always do on a Sunday afternoon. 
we would get together either for coffee or tea, light the appropriate candles for Advent on our wreath, and eat our favorite Christmas goodies like Stalin and Lebkuchen or the cookies we, ba we baked for the occasion. Most likely, we would watch either a concert on TV. I grew up in a time when, you know, when it was a holiday, the TV program would change. No, no thing is happening today. Um, either would, would watch something on TV or put on music and play a game. Now granted, I grew up in a time where we did not have all these distractions that come with a weekend, like shopping or running all over the place for hockey games or all kinds of sports in the winter. Stores were closed half day Saturdays and all day Sundays. And pretty much families would keep to themselves on the weekends. Now granted, I know this sounds pretty wholesome, but that is what my family would do. I don't remember if the candles actually on our wreath were called a certain name. They were simply a reminder how close we were getting to Christmas. Today, on the second Sunday in Advent, we just lit the candle of peace and we listened to the prophetic texts from Malachi and Luke. Biblical prophets did more forth telling, which means make public about the present than foretelling, which is really predicting what the future is about. Their specialty is prognosis rather than prediction. Prophets discern the unusual with unusual clarity the significance of current events and the circumstances of God's people. Now, based on their diagnosis, they speak a word from God to provoke God's people to change. By speaking God's word to our world, prophets still call us to radical transformation. Now, for about a thousand years, from Moses to Malachi, God spoke to Israel by sending them prophets. If you look at the Christian Bible and ignore the Apocrypha, Malachi was the last of Israel's prophets. The book is placed at the back, at the end of the Hebrew scriptures. And we also know that chronologically, whoever was Malachi comes last, writing about a hundred years after the exiles had returned to Jerusalem from Babylon, which was about 450 BC. This dates this person closest in time to the birth of Jesus. Now, interestingly, after Malachi, there was a 450-year prophetic silence. Why did God not speak? What was God doing? We wonder, don't we? At least I wonder about that. Now, that long silence then was finally broken with the first prophet of what we call in the New Testament period, which is John the Baptist. And this is how all these scripture readings sort of connect, because theologians kind of thought that in Malachi, John really is deemed and identified as the forerunner to Jesus, the one you know, we are waiting for once again. So I'll be honest with you, I'm learning about these prophets myself. And after the first reading of our text for this Sunday, I thought, oh no, what is he talking about? What is he saying? What does this have to do with peace? 
Now, the whole book is a quick read, just four chapters, so I broke down and read them. The book addresses the people's sloppiness in worship, their faithfulness or their faithlessness to God. It addresses the importance of generosity and justice or the lack thereof. And the hope for those who fear the Lord. Fear not in a sense of being afraid of God, but respecting and being in awe of God. And for those who don't fear God and keep pursuing evil ways, uh, just look at Malachi 3.5, there will be a reckon reckoning or judgment time when the Messiah eventually comes. Advent is a complicated season, I think. As we are preparing for Jesus to be born once again, we are also, in the scripture readings, most importantly, remember Christ's second coming in power and glory and in judgment. If you grew up reciting the Nicene Creed and worship, Jesus will come again to judge the living and the dead. That's the reference to that. And I've tried to find out when historically that was added or it became also part of the Advent uh, remembrances and celebrations. I cannot tell you that, but we are celebrating Jesus' first coming and we are remembering and wonder about his second coming. Now Malachi, in this case, warns his hearers of the judgment to come. He writes, who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. Like one who burns away the dross in order to refine gold. God will burn away all the evil within us. Like one who uses harsh soap to clean a garment, God will bleach out the stains of sin leave left in us unless, unless we change, we repent, and we return to God. Now I gather that we prefer the stories about Christ's first coming. There seems to be very little to do for us than wait expectantly for the gift of God to be born again in our midst and receive all the blessings that come with that. Waiting for the baby Jesus to arrive actually requires very little of us. Well, if you think about it, getting ready for the second coming of Christ, that is a whole different story. Interestingly, though, all the suggested scripture readings for Advent talk about repentance as an act of preparing for both the coming of Christ, the first and the second. The voice closest to Malachi is paired with a prophetic song of Zechariah, after the birth of his son, John. Zechariah is looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, the promised one, and his son is called to go before the Lord and prepare the way. And we remember how John does that, right? With some fearful and fierce preaching for people to repent. But Zechariah here speaking both with hope in his heart for peace in his life and his world, he proclaims that by the tender mercy of our God, the dawn from on high will break upon us to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. So how will we know how can we know peace? How will we, how can we know hope and joy and love 
that God has to offer us as we move through this Advent season and in fact always offers us. As we listen to the words of the prophets and heed their advice. The answer is simple and not yet so simple. The answer is repentance. Now, I don't like that word. I have like harsh images of repentance in my mind. You know, wearing a sackcloth and ashes or, you know, kneeling on a hard stone floor praying for forgiveness or sitting down with a pastor for many conversations about confessing. But biblical repentance means something different. It means responding to God's love by being transformed in our actions and convictions. It means turning toward God and away from whatever dishonors God. Biblical repentance is really not about our emotions, our sin, our efforts, or our resolve. It is about, though, our surrender. And for some, that might be the most difficult thing they will ever do. Might be that they admit to themselves that they are not perfect, as they think they are, and being willing to hand over their lives to the guidance of God. I think the repentance that we are offered here is a tender, a tender invitation to be our best selves. Repentance doesn't mean to feel bad, but to think differently. To repent doesn't mean to grovel in self-hatred, morbid introspection, or pious sorrow. It consists, consists both out of outward acts and an inward disposition. See, when we repent, when we turn around, when we change direction, when we choose a different path and make a radical break with the old ways, then repentance really signals an abrupt end to the life on autopilot and to business as usual. In some ways, I think that is what Malachi and all the prophets' messages are about. And I shouldn't reveal this because we have two more Sundays to go, but you know what? The message doesn't change. He says people, especially the leaders, have to turn away from the ways, have to turn away from, have, who have turned away from the ways of God, which in turn caused a lot of hardship war, famine, injustice, exile, hopelessness. I think we can translate all of that to today. And in order to fix it, the people, especially the leaders, need to repent, to return to God's ways for the sake of their people. They need to find their way back to the way of peace. Now, the ancient Hebrews had a marvelous word for peace. You know it. It's shalom, which means so much more than just the absence of conflict and war. Shalom is an all-encompassing peace, which means wholeness and human well-being, health and prosperity for all. That is the peace we are to seek in Advent. Shalom, for which, for each one of us personally, for my neighbors, for my town, for my country, for this world we live in. And yeah, the prophets knew this would not be the easiest process. There's always pain involved in refining and cleansing, but it is a process that is designed for our good for our well-being, to prepare us for the coming of the Lord. God comes into our midst 
as Emmanuel. God wants to be with us. God comes to draw us into a new life, always. A life that guides us in the way and in the ways of peace, that guides us into God's shalom. Amen. As we enter our time of prayer this morning, I don't have any particular prayer requests, but take a look at our list. Um, let us keep in our hearts Sally Morandi, who came to church and just to say hi. Uh, she's doing well, uh, considerably well. Uh, she is you know, has been fighting for her life and she continues to do so. Uh, but she said she had a great Thanksgiving on the Cape with family and solar panels installation and people doing things around the house. So I, am, I was happy to see her. And uh, I also wanna just give a little uh, shout out. If any of you are knitting prayer shawls, uh, keep knitting. We've just had a request from a hospice place, from Brighton Hospice, saying, we would love to receive prayer shawls for the family members and uh, patients in our hospices. They also serve as Sharon, actually. They are located in Newton. So anyone who wants to keep knitting, 
please do. Uh, we're going to uh, make that connection and drop them off. Um, with all the people that are in our hearts that need our prayers, let us pray. Gracious God, give your attention to us as we again seek to prepare the way of the Lord on our Advent journey. When we have lost our way and have lost hope, may we hear your speaking softly and tenderly to us. When we are weak, need, and world-weary, lift us up, we pray. When we cannot banish from our minds the darkness and continue to hold close the regrets of the past, give us the courage to claim your grace and to say, enough is enough. When we are fearful of our own mortality, give us the trust in your word, which endures forever. When we are timid or fearful about the message of hope, which we proclaim, give us courage to claim and to witness to the good news. In the midst of all the despair in this world and in the lives of many, we can only hope and pray that we find comfort and hope in the good news. May we never forget that our message is a message of comfort and of love and of faithfulness. What we pray for ourselves, we also pray for others. Be with all those places where inhumanity is shown toward any of your children. Be in those places of war and conflict, O oh God. Be in the suffering of those who have experienced natural disasters or persecution or famine. May all the earth be captured by the will to love. May all the earth be touched to change. May we be touched to change towards you, O oh God, in this holy season of Advent, as we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our communion hymn is number 319, Bread of the World and Mercy Broken. You may remain seated.
Friends, as we come to this table, we are reminded that this is the Lord's table, a banquet prepared for everyone, all who seek to be nourished and sustained in the journey of faith, all who seek wholeness and compassionate paths to peace and justice, everyone is welcomed here. Let us pray. The dawn of hope rests on the horizon and beams of love reach our doubting hearts. We celebrate the newness of the season, waiting to see how the Christ will appear in our world. And even in our despair, a glimmer of hope reaches into our twilight, beckons us to breathe and to wait. Our story tells us that the Christ child whose birth we anticipate will one day sit at table with strangers and friends, building relationships filled with love and with grace. We see this as he fed the multitudes, turned water into wine, and ate with dear ones the night before his death. And on that very night, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he said, eat this bread and remember me. And in the same way, he took the cup, and in his blessing, he reminded them that when they sipped from this fruit of the vine, to drink in remembrance of him. Jesus, the Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, light to the world, word of life, no matter how we know him or what name we call him. He is our hope, our peace, our joy, and our love. May the Spirit bless us and these elements as we commune to remember him. So friends, this is the body of Christ, the bread of life, this is the lifeblood of Christ, the cup of blessing. Let us eat and drink together for our strengthening in the faith and for the sake of this world. So take and eat, for this is the body of Christ broken for you. And take the cup, take and drink, for it is the cup of hope shed for you. Friends, let us join together in our unison prayer of thanksgiving. For the nourishment of spirit, mind, and body, for hope that we begin to see, and for comfort from the Prince of Peace, we share our gratitude, gracious God. Encourage us in these shortened days, through the long nights of this season, may your hope carry us until dawn arrives again. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 130, O Christ, how shall I meet you? Let us rise.
Be seated, please. As we go out into the world, may the path that Christ walks to bring peace and justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who sit in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all creation. May this path run through our life. May we be on the road Christ takes. And as you go out into the world, may the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you on your way. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.